Hey, what's going on folks, it's Mike here, and welcome back to my C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about one of the big features that came to C++20, and that is concepts. So, with that said, let's go ahead and dive right into it and talk a little bit about this big feature in C++20. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with the Wikipedia page, and then we'll dive into CPP reference to learn a little bit about it. But basically what concepts are, are an extension to templates here in the C++ language. So, we can basically say they're Boolean predicates on template parameters. So, again, the idea here is concepts can be thought of as a constraint so that we choose the right type that can, well, implement whatever behavior that our templated function or class or whatever is implementing here. And these are all evaluated at compile time. So again, there's no usual loops or anything. Concepts are basically just very, very simple predicate functions, or they could have number of things that are going on with them, but typically very simple. And they enforce that whatever the templated argument is, well, it adheres to whatever that constraint is or that concept. So concepts are sort of used to model constraints onto some sort of type or function that we are instantiating. So that's sort of the technical definition of concepts. Let's go ahead and look at this on CPP reference. And in today's video, we're just going to be taking a very simple look at concepts to get up and running. And then we'll go ahead and continue on in a few videos that uh, sort of enhance the features of concepts and explain some of the syntactic things that you might run into. So where I'm going to go ahead and start here is on CPP reference here. And let's just go ahead and search here. This is a feature of templates, so we could go into templates here. But if I search concepts, uh, of course, we have basic concepts. Uh, and I want to look at the concepts library here. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And again, see sort of a definition here. Let's see how it's defined. So a concept library provides definitions of fundamental library concepts that can be used to perform compile time validation of template arguments and perform function dispatch based on properties of the types here. That means that basically we call the right function based off of, well, the behavior that our concept is modeling. So these concepts provide a foundation uh, for equational reasoning in programs. And I think this is an important part of concepts that they are actually for modeling the semantics as opposed to just saying like, hey, we're enforcing syntax or something that is like, uh, you know, could be otherwise checked by the compiler, right? Concepts really are some programming concept that you're trying to enforce or something that's a property of the algorithm. So let's go ahead and uh, take a little bit of a look here um, at how this works here. Now there's a big, big section here, but uh, basically what I want to show here uh, in, the, in the main sort of uh, purpose of showing the CPP references that we get a bunch of these concepts for free. So that's what we want to start with using, like checking, for instance, if something is an integer type here as our template, or maybe if it's signed or unsigned or something like that here. So if you're used to using type traits, for instance, or maybe you've been using type traits and things like uh, enable if and so on uh, prior to C++20, you'll be quite familiar here. But if you haven't, this is going to be a nice thing for you to uh, check out in C++. So let me go ahead and just move this over here. Let's do a little bit of uh, coding here just to get us uh, started here. Um, and let's go ahead and write a, well, relatively simple templated function. And I'm going to start from the very basics here. Uh, let's go ahead and just write a print function here. Uh, and let's just say that it takes in some value, something like this. And then we're just going to do standard C out. Uh, the value is, uh, and then we'll write out value. And let's just go ahead and then call our function here. Let's just call it print, uh, I don't know, seven or something like that here. Let's compile it and run it and voila. Okay, so simple enough here. Uh, maybe we could format this a little bit nicer. Um, and then, you know, we go through the usual progression of you saying like, hey, maybe this is a useful function. Maybe we want to print things that aren't just integers. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is try to print out um, all sorts of data types here. So the typical thing that we do here is say, hey, this is a handy function. Uh, I have more versions of this function that I'd like to use that I can, you know, reasonably provide overloads. So let's go ahead and make it uh, templated here so I could add in uh, type name T like this, and we could go ahead and compile and run it. And again, now we have an instantiation for the integer type here. And of course we don't need to, because of C++ specify int here, uh, argument deduction will work here, uh, or it's smart enough to just say, hey, seven's an integer, so I'll just fill in here. So again, if you're not familiar with uh, generics, that's the sort of uh, basic idea uh, with modern C++, one of the conveniences that you can get here. Okay, so there we have it here. Now let's go ahead and say 
that we want to do something interesting. Okay, so we want to go ahead and introduce our concepts here. So let's go ahead and introduce concepts. And again, remember what a concept is. Concept, uh, let's see here, is a compile time uh, way to uh, check or compile time uh, predicate, so it's a test uh, on our type to make sure that we can use our templated uh, function here. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you uh, the syntax here. Uh, and I don't know if it has an example here. I guess we've got a few examples. Here we are um, on our concepts. And the basic idea is for our templated function here. Uh, this is sort of writing a concept here, but it'll look something like this here. Um, where we're going to, this is making a concept, but we're just going to focus on the requires clause here. And the requires clause is something that we put, again, uh, as part of our template argument. I'll write this a few different ways here, just so I can kind of get used to the syntax, and we'll continue to dive into this uh, a little bit further here. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, play around with this. I think the easiest thing to do is to just show you here uh, that I can add a requires clause, and then let's go down to one of these here, and these would be some of the concepts that we can say. Like, let's say we only want to work with integral types. It's kind of a nice place to start here. Um, and this is the concept here. Uh, most of these concepts here, and you can see how it's modeled here, uh, where, again, for some type here, this concept is going to check if it's integral here. Now, where is, is integral? That's going to come from type traits here, which is already some, you know, built-in, uh, you know, traits here for us. Uh, I think this is giving us an implementation. Maybe this is using the C++20. Yeah, this is using C++20 facilities. Uh, it's basically just going to check to see if this is an integral type here. Okay, so it's going to use, you know, whatever uh, check it can do here. But that's 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 basically it. So integral is just wrapping around this trait here. Uh, we'll get into writing our own concepts. Don't worry. Stay uh, subscribed for that here. But let's just go ahead and use standard integral here, which is part of the concepts uh, library here. So I have this template here. And I'm going to require that for my type here, it is uh, integral. Okay. So this, uh, so now I can print this integral value is, and let's go ahead and compile that, uh, seven. Okay. So now we have a print function here. Now, what's interesting here is let's go ahead and try to print off some uh, string here, uh, like this. And let's see what happens. So now we get some errors here. Okay. And what we get here is, you know, some error. It says no matching function to call for the print uh, const char star function here. Uh, note candidate uh, requires integral here. And it's giving us a little bit of a better message here. So it's telling us that the constraints are not satisfied, which is, again, what a concept is. Okay, so simple as that here. And actually, sometimes... Um, you can go to actually the bottom of the error messages now <laughs> and actually see what the concept is uh, and why it failed here. So the error messages uh, are improving with uh, concepts here. So again, if I don't put that there, uh, this will actually work here because I'm not enforcing anything. So I can take in basically any type here. Uh, and my claim is that it'll work here. But now I'm just going to uh, require that it is a integral type here. Uh, so this won't work here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this here. So will not work with... Uh, standard integral uh, concept, okay? Because I have this requires clause here. So let's go ahead and try to make something uh, a little bit more, uh, you know, useful here uh, other than this print function. And let's go ahead and write another function where you might want to use one of these requires things here. Um, and let's go ahead and do the like classic is equals function template. Uh, so let's do template type name T here. Um, and we'll get into which requires clause that we might want to use here, but let's go ahead and just do a check here. Uh, and let's look at two types here, A and B, and let's return A equal to B here, something like that here. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that this compiles. And it compiles, let's go ahead and use it. Uh, and let's go ahead and actually, let's write this out here. See out, uh, I'm gonna use, uh, let's write out our Boolean values here on C out here and do is equal one and one. And let's go ahead and just write this out here. Uh, one equal one. So that's gonna be the test. And let's see if that's true or false. Uh, oops, and I gotta uh, do a little uh, fix here. Make sure that I return a Boolean value. 
Let's go ahead and do that here. Bool. There we go. Running a little bit too fast here. There we go. Uh, and one equals one. Uh, that is, of course, true here. And let's go ahead and try with some other types here. 1.0. Okay, so we have these are templated. So I can use double types now. Remember, 1.0 is a double. It's not a float. It's a floating point type, but a double floating point type, I should say. Uh, oops, let's go ahead and do main. There we are. Uh, and that's also true. Uh, and then, of course, we could get ourselves into, you know, some trouble here by doing something like that, which, uh, oh, I guess, let's see. Let's see how many digits of precision that we have to go to. Uh, maybe that's enough here. True. Uh, what if I put, like, nine here? You know, so clearly, you know, again, once we run out of digits of precision here, uh, right, this, this isn't exactly what we want to use here. So what we probably want to do here is, again, uh, do something like requires standard integral, okay, for our type here. Okay, we want to use some other type for this here. Now, this isn't an integral type here because, uh, again, these are floating point values here. So you can kind of see how that works here. Now, um, so this is an example of a constraint that we can put on things. And then, of course, you can have your specialization here. Let's go ahead and do template uh, type name T requires. Uh, let's see if we have another one here. See if we can spot one that might be useful. Uh, I see floating point here. So that looks useful to me. Let's go ahead and read the description here. Specifies the type as a floating point type here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Floating. Oh, but let's go ahead and shrink this just a little bit here. Just so we can read everything because it's floating underscore point or T. And if we want to do the is equals uh, function, we want to do something like Again, take the absolute value of a minus b and see if it's less than, you know, something close here, something like that here. Okay, and we're going to need to include c math here. Okay, so now we have our floating point uh, specialization here, and we can handle that. Okay, if, if it's within some uh, threshold here. Okay, because it'll use this concept here. So we're not really guessing. Uh, we can handle any type here. We don't have to just write one specialization for float or double. It just needs to satisfy this requirement. So it's kind of nice uh, that this works out here. Now, there's a few other things that we can do that I want to show you here. Um, you might say, well, you know, this is kind of uh, annoying to write out here. Um, I can do the equivalent. Uh, and instead of actually putting in the type name here, uh, there is a little bit of a shortened syntax here uh, where I could actually... Uh, let, let's do this a few different ways here. Let me show you. Um, what I can do is actually, let's comment out this version here. Let's make a copy of it because uh, we don't want to copy this function. Uh, well, actually, let's and let's make sure that we're calling, uh, you know, the floating point uh, version here just to, just to make sure here uh, that we're doing everything okay. Oops, let's see here. Let's see. Yep, I already made a copy of it here. That's why we're getting uh, this error here. Okay, so... Let's see, there we go. Uh, so again, we have the floating point uh, version that is called here. Um, and uh, what I wanna actually do here is kind of use a shortened syntax. So I'm just going to uh, comment this out, this version here, so we don't get uh, too many duplicates. Let's go down here. And, um, you know, it might be annoying to type out this floating point thing. So I can actually just put the constraint here floating point. Okay, so there we go. That'll have the same constraint here. Uh, and that works here. Okay, so this is a shortened uh, version here. So shortened uh, syntax for our concept on T. Okay, so no problem there. Now, interestingly, um, remember, uh, there's always more ways to do things uh, in C++. So let's go ahead and comment this version out again. <laughs> so we're going to do this a few uh, different times here. Um, and you know what, just so we keep the syntax highlighting, let's just go ahead and just name these like version one, two, and three or something uh, is equal. Uh, actually, here, we'll we'll keep the, the comments um, just to uh, appease the compiler. Because I do want to show that we're still selecting the is equal version from the uh, integer one here. Uh, but just to show that this works here, right? we can get rid of template and again, when I have auto, uh, remember, that's basically like making this a templated function here. So it's really, really convenient here. Uh, but now I can actually do standard 
uh, floating point here, my constraint on this type and standard floating point on this type here. Um, and let's see what that does. Let's see if that compiles here for us. And it does, of course. So, so again, um, concepts are actually really, really nice in the C++ language here when I can get my code down to this here, right? And if I just want to use some of the standard concept types here, I mean, the classic ones, right, is equals, or if you're doing like string concatenation or writing an add function or something like that, um, and want to make sure you're not adding string types or something and only adding floating point and integral types, uh, that is something that you can do here. All right. So this is sort of our introduction into concepts. We can call this, you know, a concepts, uh, a light introduction, not to be confused with the initial proposal that was called concepts light. <laughs> but again, just to recap here. Um, so concepts are basically compile time tests here. Today we have explored the basic library version of them concepts. And we use them on templated functions because again, this is something that happens at compile time when we're resolving or instantiating our templates. And we basically add a requires clause uh, on our templated function. And that'll basically help with the selection of which function that we're going to use to make sure that whatever type we pass in satisfies this uh, concept here. Okay, the concept is sort of modeling the right uh, behavior here. So we see this example with uh, our print function, we did another one with is equals, and then we saw how we can select between our floating point types. And we have a few different ways to just make this a little bit more concise uh, and easier to start using these sort of uh, constraints here. So here were a few different syntax for it. Uh, I know it might be confusing. Hopefully in your code base, you'll conform to sort of one style. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about you know how to do that um, and add more constraints and make it kind of easy. But uh, basically you can add, again, the requires clause here. You can just put it where the type name is. So that's a constraint directly on the type T here. Or you can sort of put these on, you know, your individual parameters here. Uh, if you're using auto, which basically, right, this thing basically unfolds into a uh, template here. Okay, so that's the basic idea. I think I sort of prefer maybe this shortened style here uh, versus uh, this one here, just because this one's a little bit more uh, explicit. So I'm going to leave that one as my sort of like uh, preferred style uh, here. So this is shortened syntax, uh, and this is the shortest syntax. Um, uh, I like this one if I'm shortening syntax. Um, the other thing to note is, you know, I'm putting these on three different lines here. Um, but in practice, again, just remember that, you know, really this is the full like function name here. So people will separate them out different ways here, maybe something like this or across three lines. I think it's easiest when I'm teaching it to just show um, it as, as follows here to make sure it's a template, what's required, and then the actual function signature. Um, so again, just kind of labeling these parts here is the uh, function template parameters, the concept, and then the uh, function signature. Okay, so there you have it. That's your introduction to concepts. Um, I remember this feature in 2017 or so when I started first hearing about it in the C++ world. I'm sure, I mean, it's been talked about since prior to C++11, but that's when I started learning about it. And it sounded like this scary thing, but really all it is is using some of those traits and basically putting a little test or predicate on your um, template arguments. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And with that said, folks, we'll go ahead and wrap up this lesson here on templates. As always, if you enjoyed this, you can go ahead and uh, follow along with this course, uh, either on the YouTube playlist or on courses.mshow.io, which is a place where you can sort of track your progress. It'll keep track of you know which lessons you finish. There's little discussion boards if you find that helpful. Uh, and we're going to have a few more lessons on concepts. So let me know if you're actually using these in a C++ code base, if they are significantly improving your error messages. I think this is something that over time, as you have modern code bases, or if the language evolves, I mean, maybe it's going to evolve into you know C++2 or whatever. Um, that this will be a good thing, right? These sort of uh, constraints on your on your types or within your functions. So anyways, folks, that's concepts. That's your introduction. We'll stay tuned for more and I'll look forward to otherwise seeing you in the uh, next lesson.